For most of the Ice Age, bears were not secondary predators. In the Americas, an entire lineage evolved that competed directly with the largest carnivores of the continent. This is the story of the short-faced bears. The animals commonly referred to as short-faced bears were not a single species, but a group of closely related bears that lived in the Americas during the Pleistocene Epoch. They belonged to a subfamily known as the Tremarctinae, a lineage distinct from modern brown, black and polar bears. Today, only one member of this group survives, the spectacled bear of South America. During the Ice Age, however, Tremarctine bears included some of the largest terrestrial carnivorous mammals ever to exist. Understanding this group requires looking beyond a single famous species and instead treating short-faced bears as the lineage shaped by Ice Age conditions. The term short-faced does not describe body size, posture or overall height. It refers specifically to skull morphology, as you probably know. Compared to other bears, Tremarctine bears shared a shortened snout, a deep and compact skull and large areas for jaw muscle attachment. This skull shape altered bite mechanics, favouring powerful slicing forces rather than prolonged grinding. This trait is shared across the group, although it is expressed to different degrees in different species. While their skulls followed a similar structural pattern, their body plans varied widely, ranging from the relatively small spectacled bear to the enormous Ice Age giants. The Tremarctinae evolved in the Americas and began diversifying during the Miocene and Pliocene. Their evolutionary peak, however, came during the Pleistocene, when large herbivores were abundant and ecosystems could support multiple large carnivores simultaneously. Within the Ice Age fossil record, three genera are particularly relevant. The earliest is Pleonarctos, a more primitive Tremarctine that represents an early stage in the group's evolution. Later, the lineage split geographically into Arctodus in North America and Arctotherium in South America. When people talk about short-faced bears in an Ice Age context, they're usually referring to Arctodus and Arctotherium. The genus Arctodus contains two recognised species. The earlier of the two was Arctodus pristinus. This species lived primarily during the early Pleistocene and had more generalised proportions, closer to those of modern bears. While still large, it lacked the extreme limb length and mass seen in its later relative. It likely occupied a more forested or mixed environment and probably had a more flexible diet. The later species, Arctodus simus, was far more specialised. It appeared during the height of Ice Age megafauna in North America and has developed an unusual body plan with extreme long legs a narrow torso and adaptations for efficient long distance travel across open landscapes. This is the species most people are referring to when they talk about the short-faced bear. In South America, Tremarctine bears followed a different evolutionary path. The genus Arctotherium included several species, at least five of which are currently recognised. These range from medium-sized bears to some of the largest bears ever known. The most famous of which is Arctotherium augustidens, which may have rivalled or even exceeded Arctodus simus in mass. Unlike Arctodus, Arctotherium species tended to be more robustly built, with shorter limbs and heavier bodies. These differences suggest different ecological strategies, possibly involving more active predation or mixed feeding strategies rather than a reliance on dominance-based scavenging alone. South American ecosystems differed significantly from those in the north and the bears reflect those differences. Taken as a whole, the short-faced bears include some of the largest bears known to science, but size varied greatly between species and regions. Arctodus simus specialised in wide-ranging movement across open terrain. Arctotherium augustidens appear to have specialised in sheer mass and strength. Smaller Arctotherium species occupied more generalist roles within their ecosystems. This variation highlights a very important point. The term short-faced describes skull structure and evolutionary ancestry, not a single ecological niche or lifestyle. Across the group, isotopic and morphological evidence points towards diets rich in animal protein. That said, feeding strategies likely differed between species. Some short-faced bears probably relied heavily on scavenging, while others may have hunted more frequently and all appear to have been less omnivorous than modern-day brown bears. What unites them, however, is this reduced reliance on plant material compared to most living bear species. This placed short-faced bears high in the Ice Age food webs and made them dependent on ecosystems capable of supporting large herbivore populations. Short-faced bears were not simply predators among predators. Their size and feeding strategies allowed them to displace other carnivores from kills, influence predator behaviour across large areas and exploit megafaunal biomass efficiently. They were part of a broader Ice Age pattern in which ecosystems supported multiple giant carnivores at the same time, a situation that is extremely rare in the modern world. Sadly, every large short-faced bear species went extinct by the end of the Pleistocene. Their disappearance closely tracks major environmental changes 
including climate-driven habitat shifts, the collapse of megafaunal prey populations and the increasing human presence across the Americas. As large-bodied, slow-reproducing, meat-dependent mammals, Tremarctine bears were particularly vulnerable to rapid ecological disruption. The spectacle bear survived largely because it occupied a different niche, living in forested environments and maintaining a far more flexible diet. The short-faced bears were not a single animal, but a successful Ice Age lineage that evolved multiple solutions to life as large carnivores. They thrived when ecosystems supported abundant megafauna and open landscapes, but when those conditions disappeared, so did nearly every member of the group. Viewing the short-faced bears as a lineage rather than a single species gives a clearer picture of how Ice Age ecosystems functioned and why their collapse was so widespread and final. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe for more, and comment your favourite bear species, alive or extinct, and let me know what topics you want covered in future videos. But until then, stay curious.